tonight. Be thou glorified. Continue to lift up your voices to the Lord as the woman of God. Mamaya, ye can do loria, ya ye say. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. Yes. but not appreciate because to be in the presence of God to be in the atmosphere of the Lord is the thing that we ought to desire if we are advancing if we are advancing on tonight there has to be one sound When troops march, there is one sound. Although there are many. And that is his desire on tonight. You may be seated if you can. Have your way, most God. Father. I want to introduce the woman. But I want to share this. In order for the troops to remain alive, we must allow God to break the skin. It has cost us absolutely nothing. To come to church. Praise him and worship him and lift up hands. And we never really get into his presence. So we never have an expectation to advance. But we have got to allow God to break the skin. He bled for us. Oh, come on. And so the question becomes, are we willing to bleed for him? Yes, I am, God. My life, Father. We are too comfortable. We keep throwing out tradition. Throwing out the things that separate us. We don't fast, we don't pray. 
There's no more acknowledgement of Lent. There's no more sacrifice. There's no more giving up. And we have to allow him to break the skin. The woman of God that is going to bring the word of the Lord. I've known for about 52 years. <laughs> I know a lot of people have known her a really long time. There are only two people in this room that That's have right. known her longer than me. That's right. One would be our mother. And the other would be our father. Amen. Ah, Holy Father, I thank you for this moment, God. I thank and praise God for the gift that God has given her. Amen. Naturally, it was my mother's responsibility because all of my life, my mother and father have been so naturally, it was my mother's responsibility to take care of her children. And spiritually, my dad would take us to church. Yes, he did. And he would faithfully take us to church. And we were taught sound doctrine. And when my sister, I think she had to be a senior in high school, gave her life to the Lord. For real, for real. <laughs> for real. She said for real, for real. I don't remember her ever looking back. Amen. I don't ever remember her saying, you know, I'm saved, I'm just not delivered. All right. You're so right, sis. Yeah. I don't ever remember. I don't ever remember those words. The, the, the thing was, if I, if, if there was something that wasn't right, she worked hard to get it right. It was never an excuse to not be in the will of God because it was comfortable. But I wasn't saved. Yeah. And there was no, um, there was no compromise in her walk. And so we would often tell our parents, don't put us in the same room. We sure, yes, come on, sis, tell the truth. Because she served God and I served another. My God. Don't put us in the same room. And I remember the Lord was calling me. Yes, he was. And I moved to Rock Hill, South Carolina. My brother brought me here. Yeah. I brought him. Yes. And it wasn't long that Apostle Norma Gray picked up everything from New Jersey. Come on, sis. Um, I love you. And she moved here. And I said, I'm going to start going to church. She said, I'll make sure you're going to the right church. <laughs> <laughs> So we visited quite a few and landed upon a church and she said, this is it. Amen. I said all that to say that it behooves us even when, even when we don't want to to be connected to those whom God has called. Because the church has been fooled into believing God has called everybody to leave. God has called everybody to do something. Yes, right. But he has chosen a few to get us to the place with God where he desires. And one of them would be Apostle Norma Gray. So I want you to receive the word of the Lord as it comes on this evening. Yes. She is no stranger in the realm of the spirit. And if you get there, you will see her. So I would like at this time for us to receive the word of the Lord 
from the woman of God, Amen. Apostle Norma Gray. telling you that soundtrack is forever my kids be like mommy stop playing the cartoon (laughs) yeah when I when I went to the movie and saw this I cried 
because I felt like that needs to be the cry from the church. When the sharpest words want to cut you down. You got to send a flood and drown it out. That's what that's what uh, Minister Counselor Willette was trying to tell us. You know, I've been bruised and they say, ain't nobody going to love you like that. Oh, see, y'all, y'all, mm, I don't know who y'all expected me to be, but I'm telling you. They want us to, you got to try to fit into somebody's mold. Mold. You know, I remember when I became an apostle, they said, well, you don't look like one. I said, but what is one supposed to look like? And then I try. Some of y'all, come on, some of y'all, some of y'all just met me. I ain't get here. I ain't get to be this free overnight. I tried the rhinestone dresses. Polyester satin. There's some pictures on Facebook. They up there. Coming out the church of God in Christ. Wearing a bonnet with a little bow on the side. Yeah. Trying to fit into the mold. Because I said if I fit in, then they'll recognize the gift. But then when I tried to do that, and I exposed the gift, they was like, we expect all that. Now I'm going to need you to tame that. I'm going to need you to reel that in. You're a missionary. Missionaries don't act like that. They don't be preaching and laying hands and folks get falling out. That mm -mm, Not in the church I came up in. So then I tried to curtail the gift. Got married and tried to curtail the gift. See, everybody don't have that. Everybody don't have. Why well, I know you serving. Come sit up by your husband. Oh, she doing. I'm sorry. I don't want to be disobedient. If Apostle told you to work the camera, then no, he's calling me to come up. Everybody don't have what Apostle Eric and his wife have. Some of us got married to the wrong individual. And I tried to be what I was trying to be. But this is me. I'm not afraid to be me. You can like, you know what I mean? I've, I've learned to come to know that everybody's not going to like you. I don't care you how many eyes you die and tease you for us. You know? And the fact of the matter is everybody's not supposed to like you. Yeah. You got to find your kind. And so I, I love and I encourage you. Um, it's going to be out really soon. What's the date of Boston Tucker? Oh, I, he, I thought he had it in his head. He's a movie man. I encourage you to get it. There's, the, the whole soundtrack played throughout this conference. Um, there's another song that talks about dreaming with your eyes wide open. Some of us dreaming, but you're still dreaming like this. I hope God, Lord, where you leading? Lord, where your eyes closed, though. The Lord said, no, I need you to dream with your eyes open. Wide open. So that you're not missing anything. And so in order for you to do that, you're going to have to retrain your brain. Amen. Wow. Even though your brain um, biologically is located here, but in reality, it's your, it's your soul. You know, we, we, we talk about, you know, the Lord saved my soul, but that means if the Lord saved your soul, then he saved your mind. Yes. That's why the scripture says you got to work out your soul. Yes. You know how you like you work out in the gym? Well, some of y'all don't know. You just, you've seen it. You've seen it. <laughs> you know, can I just say this? The whole conference I've been calling you apostle. I don't know what it's going to take. How many more shifts? But you have to embrace it. Amen. And we don't have long. 
because he can come back anytime. Amen. And I don't want him, I don't want you to be standing in your way and say, but, but. And that's what I'm going to be doing in my seat going, I told her. <laughs> that's why this when y'all in school and teacher calls you like, I told her. You know? <laughs> it's your destiny. You guys have put in enough time. It's your destiny. It is, my brother. It's not pious. It's not thinking more of yourself. It's what the Lord has said. We made the apostleship like it's some grand plateau of achievement. <laughs> like if you reach a apostle status, that means I've arrived. No. In fact, it's the lowest man on the totem pole. That means the the more weightier is under you holding everybody else up. No, so ain't nothing to be running after. Amen. 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 But it is a royal calling that's on your lives. And you have to embrace it. You know, it's going it's what's gonna help it get you stuck out the group. Eyes have not seen this. They can't wrap y'all up any longer and put a label on it. You're unlabeled. Yeah, and I know sometimes when we wear labels so long that the glue is stuck. And even after you remove the label, you still see the residue of what used to be. And folks want to point and say, yeah, they started, they were da-da-da. But God said, I'm removing that. Hallelujah. I'm removing that. You know, sometimes you got to take some oil and get that. And he said, what I place upon you, they don't know. They have not even seen it yet. So would you all just lift your hands and just say, Father, we receive the apostolic gift and anointing upon the Lewises. We pray for their ingress into the apostolic realm. And we await the day that you, Father, will ordain them. And now only I can say this in other apostles. And I welcome you. Among our, among our ranks. And somebody clap their hands and give them. I want to, um, before I get into the message, and I promise you I'm not going to be long. In fact, the Lord said that um, I'm, this may have to be a two-parter. And if it comes to be a two-parter, because I don't believe, you know what I mean? God has done some tremendous things, and he did not even tonight. And I just don't believe in just overloading folks and trying to get all yeah I just don't believe in that so I'm going to take it as far as I can take it in about 30 minutes and if I if there's a second part all of you that are here will be notified and you'll know when it's happening and you know it'll be a, probably a speaker or um, um, some type of video where you guys can tune in because I want you to hear the whole of what God is saying amen uh, I do want to first give some acknowledgments uh, you know I normally save um this for last, but I don't know where God's going to have us end up. So um, I first want to acknowledge and give thanks for, and you going to make me cry, but I'm not going to cry because they spend time beating his face today. Amen. <laughs> and then Monique, y'all, oh, good God. Anyway, anyway, um, I normally say these individuals for last, but if I could have pressed buttons and designed children, I could not have ordered any two better. I thank God for my son and my daughter, my Brian and my Christiana. Thank you. They served their they served the apostolic gift first, and then they served their mom. I next want to thank God for my spiritual sons and daughters. Would you all stand? Those of you that are my spiritual sons and daughters, would you stand? I thank God for you all. You may be seated because you all helped me to push what God has given me out and I acknowledge you. I want to thank God for the anointed musicians that have played. I mean, I, 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 we don't fellowship at the same churches, but see, when you're in the body, and you're given a um, assignment and you agree to the assignment, you just tap into whatever is, is needed. 
a knee trend. That, I mean, we don't communicate like that. But I tell you, I don't steal. Because the Lord said, thou shalt not steal. But if I could, I would take her everywhere. She is a jewel. So anointed and so humble. We have given, I'm going to say, we have given musicians way too much leeway in the body of Christ. Thank you, thank you, sis. We pay them exorbitant salaries. And they walk around like we've given them too much. And praise and worship teams too. We have, as priests, we have turned over the music and laid the responsibility of the house on their shoulders without the holy mandate. And face this way. There's no command for them to be holy. They can smoke joints, fornicate, and still get up and grab the mic. And because they can shatarabakian shatarabohosa. And y'all hucking and bucking. And allowing, allowing them to usher you under a tainted anointing. So I thank God for a Nitrin, a woman of God. I want to thank God for the sound tech persons, EJ and Apostle Lance, because I could, I can't do this. I know what I want, right? No, the Lord said, I could do it because I've done it, but it's so much better when you can just return that responsibility over to somebody else. And when I tell you they worked to get it like I wanted it, they worked and I appreciate you. I want to thank God for the presenters of this conference. They did an exceptional job. I mean, thank you. Exceptional. I mean, you know, this is, the, this is the, some of them, their first time working with me. So I didn't baby them. You know, I didn't baby. Uh-uh. Yeah. Nope. I'm not going to tell you what I said, but I ain't baby him. And this is the results Amen. and greater. I want to thank God for those that serve as ushers and hostesses. Amen. Minister Tule, would you stand? This woman of God has a ministry in her own right. And she thought it not anything beneath her. She said, Apostle, what do you need? I said, I need a hostesses and ushers. I said, do you think the team? She said, when, where? And those that serve with her, would you stand? I appreciate you. Thank you. I want to thank my friends who came. Y'all know who you are. Because I start naming you, you're going to be like, well, she ain't got my name. I must not be no friend. <laughs> because you have, you have, you are my fellow laborers. And I thank God for you. I want to thank God who said, Apostle, please, please, can you put it on speaker? Please, can you? I can't make it. One young lady who's listening right now, she said, Apostle, I, if I could be there, I would be there. I said, I said I wasn't going to put it online, but I will put it on there for you because you ask. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. And so I want to thank God for all of those that are listening by way of Spreaker. The word of the Lord to you tonight about advancing the truth. I understand my assignment tonight. My assignment is to brief you, if you will. In military terms, they call in the soldier and they say, I need to brief you on what's getting ready to happen. And so tonight, that's, this is what this is. This is your briefing. So I would encourage you to don't think you're going to retain it. I would encourage you to get a pencil, piece of paper, your cell phone, and write down what God is saying. Okay? This briefing is to give you instructions on the assignment for the body of Christ. Okay? So what I'm getting ready to share with you is the assignment 
for the entire body of Christ. So when you, when you saw me bowed over, I, I mean, the weight of what God has instructed me to do is overwhelming at times. Because I'm like, Lord, you know, in my mind, Monique, they ain't going to listen to me. My church not big enough. My name's not big enough. My house not big enough. But the Lord said, I have a word that I need to get to the body of Christ. And I wrote in the scripture for a reason. He that hath an ear... Let him hear. And you all are here to to receive these briefings on what God expects in this latter day move for the body of Christ. Secondly, I'm going to deliver um, some strong strategy that is needed to accomplish this will of God for this season. Somebody say this season. This season. And then thirdly, my assignment is to encourage you to take up your legitimate position. Touch your neighbor, say your legitimate position. Because some of y'all are operating in positions illegitimately. Yeah, you might be skilled and you might be good, but you illegitimate. In the world, they call it riding dirty. You can drive, but you ain't got no real license. It's revoked, suspended. Your tag is bad. You praying that don't nobody find me out. And there's some of you in the spirit realm. You in the illegitimate position. God may have called you to sing first, but now he had elevated you to something else. And you're still trying to sing. And because you can, we still say, oh, I just enjoy. That's my old season. So I want to encourage you tonight to take your legitimate position. Position. I'm going to do this by giving an explanation, a definition, and then implementation. So first, the explanation. The Lord has been preparing you for years for this. How many of you can bear witness with that? For years, God has been dealing with you, been patient with you, been loving you, rebuking you. Just to get you to this moment. Excuse me. Years. Some of us have even cried saying, Lord, how much longer? How much more am I going to have to take? And just when you thought it was just about over. God said, "Uh uh-uh, not yet. The door opened. You said, this must be it. And God said, "Uh uh-uh. God's been working with you for years to get you to this precipice of the advancing of the body of Christ. Now, I shared this on last night, and I'll share it again for those of you that were not here. There's a video that was taken in 2012 that talks about convergence and when the next move of God would happen. And the, and the, and the prophet, um, Mark Sharona, said that the next major move of God will take place at the death or after the death of Billy Graham. Now, I had never heard that before. Just, I mean, some of y'all probably had. I'm not a YouTube surfer. I don't do that. I don't chase prophecy. Somebody say, Apostle, why you don't chase prophecy? Because I can sit in the presence of the Lord here for myself. Yeah, you, you don't have to go on YouTube and find out who's saying what. That's right. That's right. No, you don't. Or if you're in the right house. All right. That's right. Every house should have an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Right. Yes. Every house. Amen. I didn't stutter. Amen. And so if you're in a house where there is an established prophet, just because they're not saying what somebody else is saying, that's what God wants that house to hear. And what's happening is that some of you are going on YouTube, Facebook Live and receiving words to bring back to your house. But it ain't for your house. And you're becoming frustrated and aggravated and taking it to the past. And how can we not? Because it's not for that house. 
How many mothers up in here? Let me see your hand. How many of you have told your children that I don't care what they do down the street, around the corner, but you ain't bringing that up in here? Not if my mother would say, not in this house. There are some things that are not made for your house. And you are frustrating the purposes of God by going outside and bringing in a word. Challenging leadership. In the army, that don't happen. You will, be, you will find yourself doing KP outside doing midnight drills. If you're going to walk up in there talk about you're going to tell a drill sergeant, you're going to tell a master sergeant what y'all going to do. No, that don't happen. Touch your neighbor and say, that don't happen in the real army. Then why are we seeing we in the army of the Lord and we fooling around? And because nobody corrects you, you think it's all right. But God needs the body to advance. He's been waiting for this moment. Thank you. It's time. So for years, I want you to understand this. If nobody ever explained to you why you went through, why you went through, how many nights you cried, why he left you, why she left you. It is to bring you to this moment right here. Not just this moment in this building at, at eight, at nine fifteen, but this moment in the earth. If there's ever a time that the body needs to take up its position is right now. Politicians are crazy. Wall Street is crazy. You can't believe the news. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I mean, really. We must understand that God has brought us to this place. So the explanation is that the Lord has been preparing us. Every bit of training that's been required of you has been for this time. Notice every bit of it. Every bit of stretching. Every bit of rebuking. Every bit of it, every bit of it has been for this time. I want you to think about that. Okay. Because some of us been through. Thank you. But God says every bit, every bit of it. That's how much he loves you. That even when you and I in our craziest state said, Lord, take me out of this. Oh, God. He left you in it to train you. See, everybody not built for this army. Just like everybody ain't built for the regular army. Mm -hmm. I wanted my daughter to go in the military. Then the Lord said, "Mm -mm." mm-mm. She beat (laughs) up. Yeah. I'm talking about you. The reason why God left some of you in the ring is so that you can learn some things. You got to learn how to march when ain't nobody else marching. You got to learn how to carry your weapon when it ain't no wartime. See, you don't just pick up your weapon just because you got to fight the devil. You got to learn how to carry your weapon when ain't nothing is time of peace. Some of us, we really good in the moment. We're like, ooh, somebody child said, come on, let's pray. Shut that up. We, we really good at that prayer change happening on Facebook. But what you doing in the time of peace? You chilling, eating bonbons. Well, yeah, y'all don't eat bonbons no more. What's the deal? You can tell how old I am, right? I'm about to say, shit's been done away with it. But come on, let's think about that. When things are going good in your life. No, we are, we are at this 24-7. Apostle told us last night, in the Marines, you are Marine for life. Whether you got an assignment on duty. With, uh, no, and, and in the Army of the Lord, I'm on 24-7. Somebody said, Apostle, we can call you in time. And that's right. You're going to get the same level. Ain't no time out, no pause, no, no, I'm taking a vacation. Jesus. Wow. Jesus. 
If you're going to advance, you're going to have to put this on every day of your 24-7. Yes. Sleep with your weapon. Yes. Yes. Come on now. That's right. That's right. Because the day we live in, you don't know when you're going to have to use it. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, to the casting down of imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Jesus. Against the knowledge of Jesus. So that's everything. When I'm watching CNN, hello somebody, I ain't just watching CNN to find out what's happening. I'm learning what do I need to attack? We missing it, y'all. Wow. Don't just watch these children marching against the White House. Wow. You, need to see, you need to be in the spirit saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, what do we need to happen? What needs to take place? I don't care what side of the political aisle you on. When it comes to the spiritual realm, ain't no Republican, ain't no Democrat, and ain't no independent. Oh, I ain't gonna get no amen. And I told him last night, if you need to unfriend me, unfriend me now. God ain't studying none of this Republican. You understand what I mean? That's for earthly government. And yes, I do vote and I have my opinion. But when it comes to the realm of the spirit, God will have you praying for the opportunity. You're like, Lord, that ain't what I, that ain't what I believe. Right. I think everybody ought to have a gun, but the guy have you in there praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command a new gun law. He's like, wait, 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 what, what, huh? Come on now. You're talking right, right now. You're Jesus. talking right. Jesus. Yes, Jesus. We have to be serious about our assignment. The Lord said, in this season, nothing will go unused. Every bit of your training. Nothing, Pastor Teresa. And for those of us that's packing, come on now. That's a lot. When God told me nothing going to be unused, I'm like, oh, ho, ho. That means stuff I learned in my 80s, in 1980. Stuff I learned back in, you understand what? Nothing. To whom much is given. Yeah. Uh, Those that serve, I don't have a... uh, armor bearer who serves 24-7 anymore. They come and go. Yes, but uh, those that, that fill in, they're like, oh, I ain't know. <laughs> it's a lot with you. <laughs> Listen, it is not just because, but when you got a lot, you got to carry a lot. Some of y'all lightening your load because, no, you need to carry all of that. All the prayer training you got, all the home going to visit the sick training you got, all the homiletics, every bit of it, saith the Lord. The Lord says, as I'm advancing the body of Christ, I need every bit of what I placed in you. Yeah, receive that. Every bit of it. When Daniel was in the lion's den and the angel came, the the, the angel said, I have come because of your words. God is showing up in this season because of what's in you. Yeah, it's what he wants to do, but it's what he's invested in you that he wants to come forth. He didn't put you through all of that just so you can say, I, you got it. No. He wants to use what he invested in you. What if Jesus would have came and not used what the Father invested in him? We would not be saved. That's why he went in the garden and said, look, Lord, not my will. And that's where you have to be right now. Even the gifts that you've been afraid to unpack. Because you said, if I unpack this, they're not going to like me. My friends. But listen, I've lived long enough that the thing you think they won't like is the thing that they need. And they waiting on it to show up. Your boss waiting on that to show up. You don't leave your anointing at church. 
It needs to go to work. That's right. Amen. Your anointing needs to go with you to the bank. Your anointing needs to go with you to Walmart. Dollar General. Dollar Tree. Now, this is what the Lord said. I didn't say this. He said, yes, nothing will go unused. But he did say, however, it's not for everybody. Like I said, the army ain't for everybody. We, you know, God will accept all kinds. But in this next move, it ain't for everybody. So don't get, don't, don't get offended if other folks can't go where you go. Don't mean they're not saved. Don't mean they're not going to heaven. Don't mean they love God. Don't love God. It just means for this assignment, they're not included. Apostle Lance, how many folks did you have to leave behind when you went to Iwo Jima, whatever the name of that place was? We Jambu. How many folks that you started out with that you had to leave behind? I left everybody. Everybody. There's some, there's some folks, they ain't, they're not going to be able to go where you're going. I don't care how much you did. Your boo, your honey, your best boom, coon. They can't go. But it doesn't mean, see, where we have got it twisted and we've messed up is that we cut folks off. Come on, speak. Come on, speak. And we say, just because if you can't go with me and be like I'm doing, then you, later for you, honey, I'm, I'm moving on. Yeah, God can move you from a church, but you ain't got to disconnect. That's right. That's right. You, ain't got, you ain't got to not love. How is it you just moved to another church and now all of a sudden you ain't anointed? You don't hear God. Wow. <laughs> Apostle, you speaking truth. My God. <laughs> no, it just it just means that my assignment is not yours, yeah, right. and I can love you, yes. help you in your assignment. Yes. Yes. That's what that's what God needs in the body. So that's why your mind. Has to change. Yes. We've been doing it incorrectly. The, so, so that is that, that. That's it. So, the definition in this assignment is: we must reframe or retrain our mind to think in terms that we have never thought before. Okay, if you're taking notes, so that may mean different things for different ones of us. I don't know how you think. And I, I would dare not say that all of us in here think the same because we don't. And, and when people are preaching, I don't like it. Ooh, it really like nails on a chalkboard. When we say we all and the ch- No, we all ain't. We all ain't on track. We all ain't missing God. We all ain't. No, no. Yeah. So whatever that means to you, that you have to retrain the way you think. That's a mandate for all of us. So you have to know, how do I think? Uh, minister was trying to tell us, you got you to analyze. Right. You got to know yourself. Because mm-hmm. truly, there's only three voices that you ought to be hearing. Okay. The voice of God, right. the voice of the enemy, mm-hmm. and your own voice. Yeah. Any other voices, you need to make an appointment with Monique. But if you don't know your own voice, you're in trouble. So how do you think? Are you judgmental? Do you jump to conclusions? Some of y'all can't read text. I can text, how you doing? What you mean? What you mean how I'm doing? What you trying to say? I was praying for you. What you, what you pick up in the spirit? Uh, girl, I'm just praying for you, all right? <laughs> you got to know how you think and change the way you think. Even, listen to me, even if you think you so intelligent, yeah, right. you so smart, God said, I'm challenging you to think differently. Because yes. in some things, I thought too high. Thank you, Deidre, for because sometimes we can be so up in the clouds and so and God said, bring it down, baby. This is basic one on one. Yeah, you're trying to be deep, and I'm trying to teach you how to love. I'm trying to teach you how to walk like Jesus walked. But you're trying to be deep. No, bring that down. Change the way you think. 
And whatever that means to you, that's what God is challenging you to do. Next is you must change. Your vocabulary has got to shift. Okay. Your vocabulary has to, has to shift. So, for example, stop saying we, they, all. No. Mm-mm. Identify. Who are you talking about? What are we talking about here? Okay. In the military, terminologies mean totally different than they mean in the world. Okay. So you have to understand the terminology of heaven for this day. The terminology for your assignment. Stop saying what you heard somebody else say on YouTube and da 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 da. What language is God speaking to you? I speak very good English and I thank my mother for making me learn a dictionary. Y'all have heard me say that before. But when I go to Kenya, Africa, and I am in a Swahili speaking nation. I don't care how good or eloquent I am in English. They don't understand a word I'm saying. In this next move of God, you will have to understand the language for this assignment. Or else you're going to be speaking and wondering why ain't nobody paying attention. Your vocabulary has to change. Because if it doesn't, when God speaks, you're going to think he mean one thing and he means something else. Now, I'm going to be honest. I've done that before. And maybe, maybe some of you heard this testimony. I remember one time God said, you know, by the time your son graduates from, um, from high school, your life is going to be different. And I start jumping and shouting. Yes. In my mind, that meant mansion. That meant um, my, I wanted a Hummer back then. I was dancing. In fact, I think I was at, um, I was at Charlotte's in them church. I was in the pulpit uh, preaching, got ready to preach. And I'm just, ooh, I got happy. They're like, ooh, she must going to bring a good word. When he got, when he graduated or got ready to graduate, my life got flipped upside down. Moved me all the way to Hawaii in one room with two children. No job. Da, 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 da. I didn't understand what God meant when he said, your life is going to be different. Sometimes we rush based on those old grooves that you mentioned. And God is saying, "Uh uh-uh, I need this truth to speak my language. So you're going to have to learn the terminology. That's on you. That's not for me to teach you, okay? Let me tell you what the assignment is. So that was the definition. Let me give you the assignment. And somebody hit upon, I think it was Charlotte. The assignment of this season is souls. Yes. Now I thought y'all, none of y'all thought apostle gonna go God. deep, right? And so when they were building me up, like apostle gonna bring a word, I said, Lord, they don't even know how basic this is going to be. Yes. Say assignment souls. Assignment souls. Yes. In this season, yes. God is saying the assignment is souls. It's not about building bigger churches. It's not about houses. We done went through that season, naming and claiming it, running around cars, laying hands on motorcycles. Yeah, these things are temporal. God is saying, I want my my troops to go after what is eternal. Say assignment souls. Yeah. I don't care if your assignment is, is, is apostle, it's still souls. Evangelist souls. Teacher, souls. Sing, whatever is souls. If souls is not the major focus, then you are operating in the permissive will of God and not the directed will of God. The assignment is souls. So ever since God dropped this in my spirit, everywhere I go, I, I mean, both from the boardroom to the rock, where we have NAACP meetings, everywhere I go, it souls. Now, when I say souls, it doesn't mean just salvation. Because when we hear souls, we talk about, oh, we got to get folks saved and get them to save Father, you know, the Lord. No, that ain't no. The condition of the soul of man. 
God says, I'm after the condition of the soul. We build in bodies, ministries, empires unto ourselves. When is the last time you won a soul? Not your church, not your pastor, not the altar call, not the altar workers. Now I'm gonna take some of y'all back to basic. Do you know how to walk a soul into the kingdom? Some of y'all right here, you got saved. You came to the altar. The pastor said, join the church. They found out, do you know your purpose? You know, you can sing on this. But they didn't teach you how to win a soul. When we got saved, that was 101. Jesus said, I'm going to teach you how to fish for men. Make yes. you. Yes. Yes. Wow. Make you. Make you. Not, not choice. See, we covered that. If y'all missed last night, then you missed that. This army is not by cho- choice. No. Okay. The commandments of God. Oh, I got to hurry. Are not optional. It's not optional. I want you. Okay. Some of y'all in here, you've been living in the optional zone. If I feel like it, I do it. And if I don't feel like it, and you can't make me. Oh, y'all bold up. I'm telling you. I was scared of hellfire and it still am. But y'all bold. Y'all will not only tell the apostle and the pastor what you ain't going to do. You tell God what you ain't doing. Bold. And because we live in grace, you've been getting away. That ain't by my choice. That's God's. I would to God that we live in the days of Ananias and fire and folks start falling out. Maybe y'all are act right. <laughs> but God named this dispensation the dispensation of grace. And that's why Paul said, do not use the liberty for the occasion of your flesh. And just because you are not consumed does not mean that God approves of that. The assignment of souls. Yeah. Because you can go to church and your soul jacked up. And just because you look the part, don't nobody know it. You know it's jacked up. God knows it's jacked up. And those of us in the spirit know it's jacked up. Now I'm about to step on some of y'all toes. Because here's the deal. We go to churches and we see folks jacked up and you leave them in that state. You see them about to be overtaken in the fall. And say, well, I pray. I, I, hope they, I hope they make it in. No. You need to go, you need to, go to them, sis, bruh, pastor, apostle. See, because when it comes to that, ain't no respect a person. You can be an apostle and jacked up in the spirit. Just like the person that cleaned the carpet. And what happens is we started putting a respect a person. The Bible said God is not a respect a person. And the Bible says if you have a respect a person, then you are still carnal and not free from sin. That's what the word says. If you have a respect of person, if you're looking at me, well, I can't tell the pastor, then you, got, you ain't free from sin. And that's why we jacked up as a body. But God is advancing the troops and we are here. So if you see a brother or a sister overtaking the part, what does the Bible say? These that are spiritual. They say pray them through, restore them. And to restore someone means sometimes you got to get down there with them. Walk them through their loneliness. Walk them through their homosexuality. Walk them through whatever it is. I don't even want to start naming stuff because that's when we get in trouble. Restore. Restore. 
Yes, Come on, receive that. My yes. mother's a restorer. Yes, she, is. she can find old furniture, old clothing, and restore it. Yes. Sometimes you got to work with it. You got to scrape off the old varnish. Yes. Get down to the real wood. Stop putting new paint over top of old paint. Yeah. It'll look good for a minute. Yeah. But then it'll start bubbling and peeling. Yeah. And we wonder why folks can't stay safe from Sunday to Sunday. Oh, God said restore. In your life, you may only get one person to restore. Stop looking for the tens and the hundreds. Maybe you call just to one. Maybe you call to just this pew. That's it right there. It's about souls. In the church, we have lost our assignment. In, in restoring, listen, and I'm not talking about, you know, sometimes when we talk about restore, we, we always go back to antiquities and, and old ways. But God says, I'm doing a new methodology. Yeah, yeah. So the restoration of souls might be on Facebook. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Stop, using, stop using your Facebook for crazy stuff. Yes. What is what you talk about got anything to do with souls? Now, you know, you, those of you that follow me, you know, look, I got a life. I love my Panthers. You know what I mean? I ain't talking about being crazy and over the top. Yes, right. But our assignment, our, our intentions have got to be about souls. I may laugh and joke with my Panther friends, but the bottom line is I'm trying to establish an apostolic connection so that when you get in trouble, you know I can call the Apostle Gray because she know how to laugh. She don't have fun, but she also know how to get in touch with heaven. Amen. Intentional connections. Why is this person in my life? Why am I still in Rock Hill or wherever you are? Use the methodology that God has trained you for. Everybody not trained to be on Facebook live. And when I scroll my timeline, I say, that ain't your calling, honey. Know the method that God has given you. Maybe you're a telephone person. Maybe you need to have Bible study in your home. Whatever methodology. Maybe, you know, I I was able to, you know, minister to my to my doctor. I never listen. My doctor is so degreed. It don't make no sense. So talented. But the last time I went in there, she stopped and for about 40 minutes just talked, me and her. Because I don't leave the apostolic anointing outside in the waiting room. Whatever methodology. See, because I could I could start telling you what you should do, and but that's my blueprint. There are five branches of the military. You ever thought about that? Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, and Coast Guard. Five. When I thought about that, I said, now, I don't know if the United States knew anything about Ephesians. But those five branches represent five different ways to get the job done. Say it loud. By land. Some of us are land. That's your area. Some of us are air. You may you may not be good at talking to folks, but honey, you can bombard heaven in the realm of the spirit. Some of us are marines. We don't take no junk. We ain't taking no tea for the fever. We in with you ain't making me budge. I'm a marine. Whoa. Whatever they say. You know, but sometimes we don't we don't like the Marines in the mil, in the spiritual army because they don't laugh and they don't cut up and they don't they don't bowl over and they're not easily shaken because they on post. 
And there are those of you in the realm of the spirit. Stop trying to be like somebody else. Just be. Come on now. I be who God said I be. I be that and I be nothing else. You got to understand. You got to embrace. Hear me. You got to embrace who you be. Let this same spirit that was in Christ Jesus be. In this, the assignment this year, as I said, is souls. The assignment is miracles, signs, and wonders. And these miracle signs and wonders shall transform the lives radically, said the Spirit of God. It's going to be a radical witness. Somebody say miracles, miracles. Signs, signs, and wonders. wonders. These miracle signs and wonders are going to happen in you, with you, by you, for you. Miracles are going to start happening in places where I'm telling you, you, you think not. But you're going to be the miracle carrier. Amen. You know how everybody was afraid to touch each other doing this flu season girl get a mask don't touch me it's contagious I ain't trying to catch it that's how contagious we gonna be as we advance if you get just that close it's getting on you what the bible said in the book of acts they're very shadow You got to place a demand on miracle signs and wonders. When I go to other countries, miracles happen like this. And do you know why? Because they expect it. They walk miles. Give up whatever they need to give up for a miracle. We too comfortable with a house and a car. Bills paid off. Able to go out and eat. God says, I'm changing all of that. It's about miracle signs and wonders for a radical witness. Somebody say radical. radical. Yeah. Some of y'all get ready to be so radical. It's going to shock you. You're like, oh, Lord. Yeah. Radical. So I want to the greatest. OK, so um, so I told I gave you the I gave you the explanation I gave you the definition I'm gonna give you the implementation really quickly let's go to Joshua chapter number one verse 10 through verse 11 in this God's going to give you strategic movements for earthly victory okay we need to know so as I begin to look and I say God you know what through the scriptures can I show them that they can relate to? And God began to show me that, you know, before there was an army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, the very first army that ever was, was under the divine strategy of God. Some of the greatest generals would never tell you this, but they read the Bible and look at the strategies of God. And change them and implement them. But if you study history, you'll be like, oh, that ain't nothing but the same thing God told David to do. That ain't nothing but the same thing God told so-and-so to do. So Joshua chapter 1, verse 10, through, uh, verse 10 and 11. Someone that has it, could you read it for me, please? Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people. Joshua did what? Commanded the officers. He did what? Commanded the officers. Okay, keep reading. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan to go in, in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. Okay, so I know we've heard this message preached before, and we heard it preached about possessing, but this is not what I'm talking about. I want you to look at the divine strategy. Yes. Joshua commanded the people. I'm going to say it to somebody else, catch it. Joshua commanded the people. 
Some of y'all not going to advance because you're waiting for God to command you. When you read the whole, the, God spoke to Joshua and told Joshua to issue the command. See, y'all, you're not ready to advance because you're still stuck in the same groove. Because you're talking about if God don't tell me, if God don't hear from God, I'm going to stay right here. And that's why you're right where you at. Right. I listened. I mean, I played this over and over and over and over and researched the scripture. When did God, who did God command? He didn't command the people. He gave his servants to command the people. He told them, listen, before you go over into this, before you advance, I'm going to need you to prepare some victuals. Somebody say vitchels. Some of y'all southern folks know about vitchels. Y'all, some of y'all call them vittles. I'm going to need you to eat right. I'm going to need you to get healthy. Because you talk about you want to advance, but you unhealthy. He didn't tell him just pick up your guns and start fighting. Get prepared, bitches. Yes. 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 Touch your neighbor and say, are you prepared? Prepared. Woman of God talked about the virgin. Are you prepared? You got some, you got some stuff. What you got with you? Before I go to my mother's house, I say, what you cooking? Because you live on the other side of town. And if you ain't got nothing cooking, I'm going to stay right here. Some of y'all show up to church empty. But what you got with you? What'd you bring to the table? Joshua told the people, commanded them to prepare your own victuals. Hello now. Yeah, prepare your own food. Stop doing these drive-by church meetings. Drive-by Sunday, dropping in, driving through. No, prepare your own victuals. Because in three days, you're about to get up out of here. God's going to, there's going to be such a major shift so quickly. And if you're not prepared, you're going to miss it. The spirit of evangelism is going to move so quickly across the land. If you're not prepared, you're going to miss it. Because you don't have no sustenance. That's why God is working on you. Eat right, sleep right, live right, eat right, sleep right. I don't know anybody that God ain't saying, get your temple right. I don't know anybody. Now, whether it's y'all all listening, but we all. And so he told them, get your victuals. I don't have time to go into it. Joshua 3 through 5 and is strategic strategy. He told them, said, listen, I, priests, God spoke to Joshua, but he commanded the priests. My assignment today, today is to command the priests that are here. You're going to have to take up your assignment. He commanded the priest, say, I need you to go first into Jordan. Okay. Let me tell you about what Jordan looked like during that time. The scripture says, and Jordan's banks were overflowing. See, sometimes we talk about we stepping in to the overflow, baby. No, we talk about a rushing river of Jordan. I'm talking about flood water type rush. I'm talking about waves will knock you over if you don't know how to do it. God is commanding you, his priests. I need you to go in first. I need you to go where ain't nobody else ready to go. I need you to step in waters that are too deep and too mighty and too thrushing for you. Hello, somebody. Right. It's time for bold moves. Amen. 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 Bodacious steps yes. Yes. into fulfilling the commandment of God. Amen. God needs you to have the faith to step out of your comfort zone 
and go occupy new territories. I'm going to leave you with that. There's so much more I want to give you, but we're going to finish this part too. I promise you, because God needs the body of Christ to understand what it is. So those of you that are here tonight, God needs you to step and go where you have been afraid to go. If you're in the room and you say, Apostle, that's me. I just been hesitant. I see it. I see where God wants to take me. I see it, but it, it looked like it's too big for me. It looks insurmountable. It looks like, God, if I step out there, what if I fail? What if I fall? That goes back to Salvation 101. What did it say? Lo, I'm with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. God needs that kind of bold move. If you're ready for that, then I need you to stand with me. I'm ready to take that bold move in my assignment. When the astronauts landed on the moon, Neil Armstrong got ready to plant his feet on a place he had never been. And y'all know what he said, right? One small step for man, one giant giant step for mankind. I want you to close your eyes. What God is asking of you is but a small step for you. But it's a giant step for the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And this body must move forward. We must get out of the groove of the familiar, the comfortable, and embrace a new place that's been prepared for us in the realm of the spirit. How can God put new wine in the old wineskins? They will burst and the wine will be spilled. There are many churches where the wine is spilling. It's being poured, but the skins can't contain it. But I believe I'm speaking to soldiers who are ready to take that giant step forward. So I believe in Acts prophetically. And so I want you to find a space where you can take a giant step. Now, I, I, I want you, if you've got to come out the aisle, husband and wives, I need you to get together. And if you've got to come in the aisle, or if you've got to come up front, whatever you need to do, if you've got to move out the pew, yeah. I feel this in my spirit. Mm. Father, as a prophetic act of faith, we're showing you that we're ready to advance the troops. I pray for the apostles that are in this house. That as you have called us to set order and to bring correction and instruction, that we're ready to take a giant leap for the body of Christ. For those who are pastors, Father, there are sheep that are ready to come, but the space is too small, spiritually too small. So help these pastors to take a giant step to advance 
I pray for the prophets who are called to the 21st century. Lord God, cause them to be bold in their vessel of voice, written expressions to take a leap forward. I pray for the teachers. Oh God. Our teachers have been so mishandled. But you gave teachers the more weightier responsibility. I pray for the teachers that they would take a giant step forward. Lord, we're entering into one of the greatest revivals we have ever seen. So I pray for the evangelists, that office to be restored and that they will take a giant leap, a giant step forward. So here we are, God, this assembled body. And Lord God, we get ready to step as an act of faith telling you I'm ready okay this is not a we ready there you go somebody say I'm ready I'm ready so I don't want to try to you know synchronize this because you know when when you before you can be walking cadence it takes some rehearsal but I want if you with the person that you with then you need to make sure okay we, we're gonna do this together y'all get to talk and discuss it Apostle Land said you leave with your left that's what I'm going to tell you, okay? You lead with your left. I know we're used to leading with our right, right? But I'm going to need you to lead with your left, so get your left foot ready. Now, whenever, don't, you ain't got to do it on my count. I don't want, I ain't going to do one, two, three. But whenever in your spirit you are ready, whoo, I need you to lead, okay? Ah. Oh. I leave it behind. I'm ready. Come on, some of y'all take a two step. Go ahead. If you feel like you want to take another one, take it. I'm moving forward. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. I'm moving forward. Yes, glory. All right, are you there? Yes. Now, we get ready to do this next part in cadence. Okay, with your left, here we go. Left, 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 right, left. Come on, army. Left, 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 right. Left. It didn't come on. Left, 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 right. Come on, Apostle, let's need some cadence. Left, 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 right. Keep left, going, keep going. Left, left. Y'all follow line. Left, right, left, 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 right, left, left. Come on, left. left Some of y'all got to work left, it out. Right, left, there you go, come on. Left, left, left. left. You got to listen to the leader left, in command. Left, 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 right. There you go, say it. Two, three, four.
Now listen, what we just did was not unusual. God commanded Joshua to tell the people, I need you to march. And I need you, I need you to obey the commands. Because something you have never seen before is about to happen. I want, as you all march, something you have never seen is about to happen. I want those of you who feel like, okay, Apostle, I came, I just, I just want to be anointed. I'm not going to prophesy because I don't feel that. That was for the other time, the other session. But if you want anointed, I want you to come quickly. Come on. They came, God, to receive from you. So thank you as I anoint them. They shall receive what they've come here for. Thank you for this rich anointing upon your servant. She will arise and accomplish the will for souls. You're anointed for this. Yes, yes, yes. You are anointed. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. yes. Um, you are anointed. Yes. And included. But this faith is the kingdom. It's all filled with the Lord. Right here. He embraces your right to life.
and break all the sound. Yeah, spirit, spirit, without and break all the sound. All the other things Bring it down I said I wasn't going to prophesy But the Lord said to speak If you came up Modesty Is your season All of it has been about These moments All of it That song Can be your theme song because you're busting through the barricade. See, you used to going around them. I work around it. God says, no more. I'm anointing you to break through the barricade. Father, hallelujah. Yes. He's about to reverse your name. Modest teeth no more. Break out. For there's revival in your spirit. Souls by the thousands. Can you see it? I said, break the barriers. I'm giving you favor with government. Where others can go, you got to go. Boldly. 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 So the Spirit of the Lord hovers. Await. Oh! That's what he said. I'm awaiting what you command. See, the Spirit of the Lord, listen to me, you all. From the very beginning, the Spirit of the Lord hovered, <laughs> waiting on the Lord's command. So it's not only for her, but the Spirit of the Lord is hovering over you. How will you receive the commands? Yes, you've got a special relationship with the Lord, though. And you've been avoiding it. It's like, Lord, I, I'm not special. <laughs> But when you speak, they're ready to go. So command them. Yeah. Some folks are not going to like it. It's okay. Because when you get ready to go, they can't go. They made it about the hair, the nails, and the jewelry. But it ain't about that. Favor is on you. So go forth and do it. Right place, right time. Somebody wrote a word, and I'm not sure. I think it was Shalanda. Shalanda, where are you? I believe this is the person that this word was for. That you have found yourself in a low place. But God says that low place is a place of elevation. Yeah, don't despise it. Because it's from this place that you shall arise. Like a phoenix from the dust. And you will take and occupy your rightful position in the body of Christ. And souls Jesus. will come into the kingdom because of your voice and because of your actions in Jesus' name. Somebody clap your hands and give God praise. We're getting ready to go. But I want to share one last thing. We have, where are they? Those little camouflage thingies. Okay. No, she said, okay, so. Uh, um, one, you may be seated. One of the things that God spoke to me about is that we've been so accustomed that when we talk about war and we talk about the army, we immediately go to camouflage. Right? 
But what was camouflage for? Not to be a secure. To conceal. To blend in. To not be noticed. God says, I'm getting ready to do some outstanding things. So I need my people to stand out. So I look for a reverse, it's called reverse camouflage. So that's the camouflage is like pink and purple and just ridiculous. I had these cloths cut and I want you to come and pick whatever one speaks to you as a reminder that I'm supposed to be outstanding. You ain't gotta come get them right now, but as we exit the service, I want you to come and get one. I wanna thank all of you for coming for your time and service. Yes, Apostle. I really don't mean to be out of the water. Yeah. You know, Diane's online. Yeah. She said she's come forward to prayer. So, whoo! I want y'all to begin to pray in the spirit right now. Diane Tucker. I know you know the voice of God. And so, Apostle, as a point of contact, let me bring me your phone. I anoint this phone as a point of contact. Oh, that's it, Diane. I feel you in the spirit. That anointing that you feel, it's your strength. It's your fortress. It's your sustainer. It's your standard upper. All that you need is in the anointing. So we decree healing in the name of Jesus. We decree that from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, you be healed, covered in Jesus' name. Diana, hear the Lord saying to tell you, my grace is sufficient, daughter. It doesn't matter what you go through. I am always there with you. And my grace is sufficient. He says, enlarge your tent. Ah! And be ready for the overflow. In the month of April, you shall see great overflow. An accomplishment for the things that you've endured low these many years. As you lift your hands I see the tears running down underneath your chin. God says, I'm with you. I'm for you. I'm your captain of the guard. So I thank you for her. In Jesus' name, this whole church is praying for you, Diane. Again, I thank you for your coming. Thank you for your serve. Going to ask if there's an opportunity for you to sow seed with those who are vendors that are still left. Make a purchase. Do you have the gifts that are here? If you guys do. I know I said I was going to give away some gifts. And I forgot last night. So what I'm going to ask you to do is just sow it into somebody's life. Let the spirit of the Lord lead you. I'm going to ask Apostle Lance to come. And to bid you the benediction. I know you don't want to go because if you're like me, I could just really get a pallet and sleep on the floor. But if you don't have any place to go, you can meet us tomorrow at 914 Ogden Road with the Vine Church and its pastor will be leading us in worship tomorrow at 1015. God bless you, Apostle Lance. Let us all stand. Have you been blessed these past few days? Yes. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Now remember, this is just the beginning. It is just the beginning. Amen. Amen. What you received here today. My God. Pick it up and carry it. Oh, Father. It may have been weighty, but carry it. And be prepared for further instructions yes. to come. Amen. Amen. Because we are advancing. We are advancing. Amen. Yes. We're, not, we're not going to advance. We're already advancing. We're advancing. Yes. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
Lord, we recognize that there is just none like you. We are so undeserving. Oh, mighty God. But your love is just so awesome. Every day we think we, we understand it, God. And as the day goes on, we recognize that we really didn't get it until the next time and the next time. And the next time, and your love is new each and every morning, every day, Lord God. You love down upon us, and we're so grateful. I'm grateful. But now, God, as we depart from this particular meeting, we will not depart from your presence. Yes, Father. Father God, we may be ending a service, but we are beginning an assignment. And we ask, O oh Lord God, that you would continue to be our strength. Continue to guide and direct us, O oh Lord God, as we have an ear. Lord God, we're putting our ear to the ground to hear the vibration, O oh Lord My God. of your footsteps. That as you say left, right, left. As you say. We will left, right, left. And so we thank you, Lord God. We make a declaration and a decision tonight to move according to your instructions. Lord God, if we don't even, if we don't have the full understanding, we're going in obedience and submission, oh God. Yes, Father. Knowing you will bring clarity. You will, Father. Along the way. So we love you and we thank you. For those who have come, Lord God, now, give them safe passage as they travel, Lord God, home. Some are driving, some are flying. Lord God, those near and far, go with them and keep them, protect them. Keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger, both seen and unseen, naturally, as well as spiritually, Lord God. And Father God, be with this house as it's continually been spoken, Lord God. Bless this house, oh Lord God, to continually be a place, Lord God, where your presence dwells. So we thank you. We adore you. Thank you for our leader. Thank you for our, our apostle, Lord God, for the shepherd, Lord God, for the, for the head, Lord God. Bless her. Yes, Father. We say a special prayer, Lord God, right now as uh, upcoming surgery, Lord Jesus. You are the great physician. You are God. You are the healer, oh Lord God. I thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that you will do the miraculous oh, gift. That you will steady the hand of the surgeon. Yes. And it will be your guidance and direction. It will be, you Father. be with the anesthesia oh, of this, Lord God. Jesus. You be with the nurses, Lord God. You be with every process. Every oh Lord God. And In the it will name go. Jesus. According to your will and your way, oh Father God. Because by your stripes, she is the God. Hallelujah. We thank you for it. Thank you now, God. We thank you now, Lord God, for the, the, the rapid recovery, oh Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Father God. You, you deal, oh Lord God, and, 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 and take away any pain. We know the recovery process, what they say, but Father God, you be with her. Hallelujah, Lord God. Even no medication, Lord God, you be the one, oh Father, that takes away the pain. And prepare the body, Lord God. Prepare the body for the healing. And she will run. She will jump. Hallelujah, Lord God. As never before, oh God. We thank you. That you might be glorified. Show your hand. Father God, let, Father God, I'm asking that the miracle that we yeah. heard today starts with her. Let us if not then it's just for her, let us see your hand of glory, God. Who is on your hand of glory? 
So we thank you. We give you praise and honor. In the name that's above every other name. Your name. Jesus Christ. Our Savior. And Redeemer. Say amen. And amen. God bless each and every one of you. Hallelujah. So many things going on. Yeah. Him and his wife did a marathon. Yeah. This is this is why they did a marathon. How, how she knows, long she ago? Lost about 170. Wow. No, I did not. I don't know. 195. Thank you very much. Oh, that's right. All of the cows. Look, we was fighting over clothes. What are you fighting? I had started we off had with clothes. And, uh, wow. Wow. Yes. So cool. so, uh, look, and I thought that they were somebody else. I thought she was a member of the uh, Crosby's church. So I'm just like, hey, praise the Lord. And then when she turned around and said, that's my people. Oh, that's so good. Uh, I'm so glad you guys did. I'm so glad you guys did. Oh, my God, that's my heart right there. So I see you guys on the um, 27th. Is that what you said? Sunday, I guess. I go to the 